a very good evening to you. Welcome one, welcome all once again to Sweet and Swing here on Max Radio. My name's Howard Kane, and of course it is a pleasure to have your company. This evening, more from our 50 Reasons to Love Paris. Carrying on with our little retrospective of Noel Coward. The pie man, George Scott Wood. And to start off, what we'll be aiming to do over the next hour. Next Monday or next Tuesday, your golden shoes day. Even when the darkest clouds are in the sky, you mustn't sigh and you mustn't cry. Just spread a little happiness as you go by. good way to get going isn't it as good a way as any spreading a little happiness exactly what we aim to do here on sweet and swing every friday evening how are we all i trust i find you in good fettle or as good as you can get as we head pell-mell towards summer hopefully takes a long time to arrive doesn't it it just sort of gives you little hints and you get to march and then of course it snows just to remind you it's not actually spring And then we get into this part of the year, mid-April, April April showers and all the rest of it. And you just have the odd day here and there, which is lovely. And the sun is out. And if you can find a nice sheltered spot away from the breeze, it's actually got a little bit of warmth in it. And people start getting excited because the temperature has risen to a dizzying 12 or 13. It's what you call living on a rock in the Irish Sea, I suppose, isn't it? We get used to it. It is. I sometimes pinch myself and stop getting excited. It got up to 13 degrees. Anyway, you know what I mean. It is what it is, as they say, and hopefully it might get up to the dizzying heights of high 19s or even 20 before uh, the next few weeks are out. Well, months, perhaps. Nonetheless, the flowers are out, the sky was blue, and uh, we are as well with the world as we can be. And if we're not well with the world, hopefully the music over the next 
50 odd minutes will help put a little smile on your face and remind yourself maybe of better times. Times long ago, far away, perhaps when you first met your beloved, first set foot on the dance floor, an old band, an old tune, an old voice, something familiar, like this gentleman perhaps. Wonderful, oh, it's wonderful to be in love with you. Beautiful, you're so beautiful, you haunt me all day through. Every little breeze seems to whisper Louise, earth in the trees seem to twitter Louise. Each little rose tells me it knows I love you, love you. Every little bit that I feel in my heart Seems to repeat what I felt at the start Each little sigh tells me that I adore you, Louise Just to see and hear you Is joy I never knew But to be so near you Thrills me through and through Anyone can see why I wanted your kiss. It had to be, but the wonder is this. Can it be true? Someone like you could love me, Louise. Every little breeze seems to whisper, Louise. Birds in the trees seem to twitter, Louise. <laughs> Each little rose tells me it knows. I love you. I love you. Every little beat that I feel in my heart seems to repeat what I felt at the start. Each little sign tells me that I adore you, Louis. Just to see and hear you <laughs> is joy I never knew. But to be so near you thrills me through and through. Anyone can see why I wanted your kiss. It had to be, but the wonder is this. Can it be true? Someone like you could love me, Louise. Just to see and hear you, oh, it's joy I never knew. But to be so near you thrills me through and through. Anyone can see why I wanted your kiss. It had to be, but the wonder is this. Can it be true? Someone like you could love me, Louis. Well, you don't need me to tell you who that was. Maurice Chevalier in 1929, would you believe, singing Louise, of course, every little thing. Yes, you know it. Wonderful stuff. I told you, old and familiar voices. When was the last time you heard Maurice Chevalier on the radio? I'll, I will bet it was a while back. And if it wasn't, let me know where you heard it. Howard Kane at manxradio.com. C-A-I-N-E. Always lovely to hear from you and uh, any thoughts on the programme or things like that. Oh, the last heard this or something you might like to hear. Drop me a line, Howard Kane at manxradio.com or again Howard at Sweet and Swing, Manx Radio Broadcasting House. Douglas Head, Douglas in the Isle of Man. Well, that's quite a bit longer, isn't it? So more to remember. Uh, and the old postcode IM15BW if you want to put pen to paper. But Howard Kane at manxradio.com is so much easier. If you've got access to some sort of device, and if you haven't, get your grandchildren to do it. That's what they're for. They'll have been doing it since, you know, they were in the pram, I dare say. Uh, I should have said we've started out, of course, still in the same year, actually, 1929, as it happened. And, uh, yes, spreading a little happiness with Arthur Rosebery. Len Lee's taking the vocals there with a sort of cheery, chappy sort of approach. Len Lee's himself, very versatile, great vocalists, vocalists. Uh, sang with the likes of uh, 
Fred Elizalde, uh, Arthur Rosebery, of course, also sang with Victor Sylvester, who we heard last week, Victor and Victor Jr. We have a bit of a request coming up later on, come to think of it. Um, more of that in a few moments. And then we went uh, on to uh, Maurice Chevalier. George Scott Wood is the uh, the pie man I mentioned. Everything was pies with uh, George Scott Wood, or an awful lot of pies. A lot of his tunes were named after pies, hot pies, cold pies, such and such pie, more helpings of pie. Uh, he was a bit of an obsessive with pies for some reason. Not 100% certain. I'll see if I can find out at some stage or other. But could he play all right? He most certainly could. He's one of the best all-rounders on the British popular scene in between the two world wars, realistically. Uh, let's hear him in action. It'll have to be something pie-based, won't it? What about uh, piano pie? But you've not had one of those. go how many did you get from that little pie medley piano pie it was happily called with uh, bon bijou tell me tonight diner da 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 dee dee mean to me and someday i'll find you played by george scott wood as i say quite a character yet another name which how often do you hear it bandied around these days not a lot very popular as i say between the wars a varied career went for quite some time born back in the 1920s i think it was 
And uh, I beg your pardon, sorry, it wasn't. He was born in uh, 1903 on the 27th of May. I should get the date right, shouldn't I? I'm not back to front. And stu- studied originally with a Miss Hoffman, uh, becoming then a pianist of the popular concert pianist at the time, Philip Halstead. Uh, and then went on for some time. He won quite a few awards as a, a pianist at the Edinburgh Music Festivals, playing with his brothers as well, and got the coveted Marchant Cup for chamber music. At the age of just 16, performed Beethoven's Piano Concerto No. 3 in C minor, and in 25 made a little recital tour of Canada and the USA. No slouch he, was he? But then went on to sort of more popular music, came back to Glasgow, joined a band led by his brother Chalmers, what a great name, and then uh, went into the Omega Collegians, a Glasgow university band, and they toured England and Scotland, and disbanded then in 1928. He went on to play with the violist Jay Widden then, and worked as a pianist and arranger, made lots of arrangements for the great Harry Roy as well, on the Parlophone label, and all sorts of other activities as well, playing with lots of people, arranging and such like, and a greater piano accordionist, as well as a pianist as well. I'm still not 100% certain, why he called everything pies. Whether he just liked pies, I don't know. Or there could be a much better reason. I'm sure the old maestro told me once. Sadly, he's not around for me to ask anymore. So if you know, let me know. And I'll put it out again. We'll play some more pies from George Scott Wood. There's bound to be a a good reason somewhere, but I had a quick look around and I couldn't see any direct link of why so much of his music was linked with pies. You think on this collection, we've got a hot pie second helping, we've got hot pie first helping, we've got our piano pie, um, we've got a third helping of hot pie, and indeed another helping later on of hot pie. Yeah, pie, pies, whether it's just a sort of generic term for putting together little medleys or not, I don't know. I don't know. I might be missing something. Let me know in any case. If you know, someone's bound to know, they always are, aren't they? Tis Sweet and Swing. Howard with you until the top of the hour. Always lovely to have your company as ever. What about a bit of Jimmy Lunsford? And it is a Friday night, so what about some blues in the night?
mother told me when I was in deep bed. My mama done told me, son. What you tell you, man? A woman will sweet talk and give you the glad eye. But when the sweet talking's done, she ain't gonna do nothing. A woman's a two-faced. A worrisome thing will leave you to sing the blues Every time In the night Now The rains are falling here The train are calling Who we Mama didn't call me Hear That lonesome whistle blow of course Jimmy Lumsford and his orchestra very fine we don't have enough Jimmy Lumsford I've got a whole box set of Jimmy somewhere so uh, maybe we should do another little retrospective of him uh, I remember I think I actually bought it for the old maestro several years ago uh, because he was a bit of a, a fan of Jimmy Lunsford and liked some more and very fine playing and also had a reputation for being a very fair um, boss and a very good band leader and just generally a nice chap from all accounts um, not always the case you always think that all these old band leaders are going to be wonderful gentlemen, and an awful lot of them were characters, not necessarily gentlemen. We'll leave it at that, I think. Now, I mentioned a, a bit of a request. It, it might not be the right request, but uh, if I tell you what it was. It was uh, from Peter and uh, Andrea over in... Um, I can't get the clan fair bit, I'm afraid. It's near Abergelly in North Wales, who have been listening of late. Uh, said, we've only been recently following you on the podcast so we can listen to the old programmes. Lovely, there's lots of them. Keep you going forever, I dare say. But keep listening to the new ones as well. It's always nice to listen to it live if you can. And we dug out a bit of uh, Glenn Miller on the Brunswick label. This is something that Peter's dad used to listen to. Uh, he had an old, or his dad had an old 78 shellac record of Glenn Miller on the Brunswick label. But it got broken, as was the case with a lot of 78s. They were a bit fragile, not to say heavy, weren't they? If you dropped one of those, that was it. Curtains. The old 33 and a third LP, a little bit more sturdy from that point of view. Very prone to scratches and dust and muck and fingerprints. But if you dropped it, you might get away with it if you didn't hit a hard surface, it might be said. Uh, we still got some 78s knocking around. And I do have a modern 78 player. That's another thing I keep threatening to do. If I can find space here in Studio 3, which is where we normally do Sweet and Swing from, there is a turntable here. I don't think it does 78s. But I do have a modern 78 player, which I could possibly bring up here and link to the desk and play 78s direct. How good would that be? be lots of scratches and pumps, I dare say, but, ooh, the atmosphere... You could almost smell the shellac through the airwaves, I dare say. If we can do it, well, it might be fun. I need a lot of 78s there, wouldn't I? Because they don't last very long. I don't know how many we've got. It might be fun to do one or two in any case. 
I'll put that one to uh, onto onto sort of standby and see what happens. Yeah, we'll put it on the back burner. We'll see if we can do anything. Anyway, back to Peter and uh, Andrea. Or Andrea, I don't know which one it is. Andrea. Uh, he also says uh, another song from the same era. I've been trying to find is coming in on a wing and a prayer. It was recorded by many artists. Yeah, it was. Uh, and Shelton seems to be the one that pops up quite often. And I've managed to listen to most via the internet. I've yet to find one that sounds like my dad's 78. Sadly, of course, as is often the case with these things being long ago and far away. He says, artist and label unknown, another casualty of breakage, I'm afraid. I presume my dad bought his records shortly after the war in which he served in the RAF. So the songs probably had a special meaning to him. I'm sure you're right. Absolutely. The sort of music which gave you the will to carry on, I dare say. So, at the end of the day, I have no idea whether this is the one your dad really enjoyed, Peter. Uh, it's Will Kelly and his boys, and an unknown vocalist, but it definitely is, coming in on a wing and a prayer. <laughs> Coming in on a wing and a prayer Though there's one motor gone We can still carry on Coming in on a wing and a prayer What a show, what a fight Yes, we really hit our target for tonight How we sing as we limp Look below, there's our field over there With our full crew on board And our trust in the Lord We're coming in on a wing and a prayer Someone to love me If 
I had a ribbon row all nice and clean I could be a princess or a fairy queen Prince Charming then would court me His love he would swear If I had a ribbon bow to tie my hair There's a story of a girl A story seldom told What she wanted from this world Was not of gems or gold Her wishes were quite plain, as you will see. For often she would simply make this plea all the live long day to the Lord above me. All I do is pray for someone. I could be a princess or a fairy queen. Prince Charming then would court me, his love he would swear. If I had a ribbon bow, a pretty little ribbon bow, Prince Charming then would court me, his love he would swear. If I had a ribbon bow to tie my hair. Lovely stuff, the ever beautiful Maxine Sullivan. She was a beautiful woman and a lovely, crystal clear voice she had in her young years as well. If I had a ribbon row uh, covered by Fairport Convention in more recent times as well, Maxine first recorded in 1936. But uh, the version we've just heard there is from uh, 1940. Wonderful, yeah. I always forget how much I like it. Great song as well. I really like that one. has a sort of slightly haunting quality to it, doesn't it? And before that, coming in on a wing and a prayer for Peter Andrea over in uh, Peter and Andrea over in uh, near Abigaili in North Wales. And uh, thoughts of your dad. Whether that was the one, let me know. Probably not. I mean, it's just a stab in the dark for a uh, one that was available I could find in knocking around but as you say Anne Shelton lots of recordings it seems one of the more popular recordings with Anne I think but uh, who knows you might find a scrap somewhere and remember the exact version your dad had at some stage Peter you never know stranger things do happen I know it's happened in our house at least in any case we will uh, crack on a bit of Noel still to come yes we will have a little bit more of our netros- me- metrospective retrospective <laughs> of Noel Coward the wonderful Noel Coward. I'm not going to turn into Noel Coward if I can't get my words out at all. Uh, but also this one I thought would be quite nice from an unforgettable session. 1947 it was in the Civic Auditorium, Pasadena, California with, well, a who's who of some of the swingers and some of the boppers. Errol Garner, Nat Cole, Louis Belson, Dodo Marmorosa, Red Norvo, Sonny Chris, Howard McGee. The list goes on and on for what must have been an amazing night. We'll hear one of the smaller bands, Errol Garner, Irving Ashby, Red Calendar and Jackie Mills at the drums. Lover.
An appreciative audience there in uh, California, Pasadena, the Civic Auditorium, April the 29th, 1947, for an all-star session with all sorts of people. Like I said there, as I was mentioning before, the list goes on and on. I won't bore them with you because I'm not playing the rest of them. But you did indeed, indeed hear Errol Garner at the piano, Irving Ashby at guitar, Red Calendar, the great Red on bass, Jackie Mills, subtle but there, propelling things along with brushes, on the drums and lover. Time for a bit of a Noel Coward. We've been enjoying a little retrospective from this collection of the Noel Coward album. Uh, some studio sets and also some live recordings from the Wilbur Clark Desert Inn in Las Vegas in 1955. I think this one's from the studio. A uh, <laughs> An admission from Noel, maybe not held by everyone these days, but who knows. I like America. I don't care for China. Japan's far too small. I've rumbled the Rio Grande. I hate Asia Minor. I can't bear Bengal. And I shudder to think of that awful stink on the road to Samarkand. It's really hell, that dreadful smell on the road to Samarkand. But I like America, I have played around Every slappy happy hunting ground And I find America okay I've been about a bit, but I must admit That I didn't know the half of it Till I hit the USA No likely lass in Boston, Mass From passion will recoil In Dallas, Texas they talk of sex, but only think of oil. New Jersey dames go up in flames if someone mentions bed. In Chicago, Illinois, any girl who meets a boy giggles and shoots him dead. 
But I like America It's society Offers infinite variety And come what may Give me a holiday In the good old USA I've loathed every acre From can to canton I also deplore Bombay I've jeered at Jamaica And seen through Ceylon And exploded that myth Of those flying fifth On the road to Mandalay I'll never miss those blasted fifth On the road to Mandalay But I like America I have travelled far From Northumberland to Zanzibar But I find America okay I've roamed the Spanish main Eaten sugar cane But I never tasted cellophane Till I struck the USA All delegates from southern states Are nervy and distraught In New Orleans Those wrought iron screens Are dreadfully overwrought Beneath each tree In Tennessee Erotic books are read And when alligators thud through the Mississippi mud, sex rears its ugly head. But I like America, its simplicity, and its passion for publicity, and come what may, I shall return someday to the good old USA. From the studios, Noel Coward. We've been listening to some live sets uh, hither to that, but uh, a mixture on this collection of live and studio recordings. The studio recordings slightly later, 1956, I think, in New York, and the actual live set in Las Vegas was the previous summer, June of 1955. I like America. Well, he did, was rather fond of America, as I recall. Uh, <laughs> how many people are fond of America now? I don't know. I do actually quite like America in a way, but they do seem to have been struggling a little bit these days, don't they, with some of their, um, well, I don't know, politics, shall we say. More from Noel next week. He's a man that would have been an entertaining party guest, wouldn't he? I dare say, well, he says he didn't like parts of France. He didn't mention Paris, though, did he? He didn't mention Paris. Uh, I think he certainly played a few sets in Paris. There were a couple of mentions of some French places he wasn't too fond of, but he did not say he didn't like Paris, and he would have been there numerous times through his life. So 50 reasons to love Paris. We've been enjoying this one from our Gitan Jazz in Paris collection as well. So how about, uh, from that very number then, uh, Sous le Pont, not d'Avignon, before you ask it, this is Sous le Pont de Paris, Pierre Michelot and his orchestra.
a nice little up-tempo number there. On the modern side of our swing, I would say with that one, Pierre Michelot and his orchestra. Pierre, the bass player, used to play with, certainly played with Bud Powell, I think, and I think with some of the other boppers like Dexter Gordon. I think our man in Paris uh, has a Pierre on bass, but fine orchestration there as well. Nice up-tempo swing number to uh, bring us towards the end of the programme. Not quite there yet, so what about something from... Well, we zoop back a few years. We head back from being love in Paris in the 1950s. What about if we go back to 1937 and join Joe Loss with the uh, ever-wonderful Chick Henderson? I now know. Or is it I know now? You decide.
and that doesn't send you up the stairs to bed in a happy mood, and I don't know what would. You don't have to go to bed, of course. You can carry on. Go back and listen on the podcast, of course, because this show available on the podcast shortly after we finish this evening. And if you don't want to listen to this one, because let's face it, you've just heard it, why not listen to any of the others you might have missed going way back? Oh, when I was a nipper, almost. Well, not quite that far. But there's quite a few there in any case you can entertain yourself with if you haven't had your fill of some of the best swing and big band and nostalgia around this evening. Yeah, bit of boogie. Do we have enough boogie? I don't know. We don't have a lot of boogie on Sweet and Swing. We could have more. Howard Kane at manxradio.com if you'd like to hear some more. Billy Penrose and his quartet in this case. Before that, of course, the great Joe Loss. No stranger he to Manx Shores with Chick Henderson. Sadly, I think we lost a friendly fire in the last war, didn't we? I know we died during the war. And I think it was friendly fire. What a way. We've more or less filled up another hour again with some great sounds. The good news is... We're not going to be here next week, sadly. It's the Guild, so don't tune in next week. That's joking. It's bad news, isn't it? But we'll be here the week after that, and Judith will be here with the Guild next week. Great stuff. Check her out. Enjoy the Guild and get along if you can. In the meantime, look after yourselves, and I will see you same time, same place, in a couple of weeks. Enjoy the Guild. I'll see you then. Bye-bye. <laughs>